Love, Death, and Robots. I finally had a chance to watch this series, so let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. This time we're going to be talking about the Netflix uh, uh, anthology web TV series um, adult animated thing uh, known as Love, Death, and Robots. The 18 episode first season was released uh, this past March of 2019. And it is produced by Joshua Donan, David Fincher, Jennifer Miller, and Tim Miller. Each of the episodes is animated by different people from a range of different countries, and it's sort of a reimagining of uh, Fincher and Miller's long development, uh, reboot development of the 1981 animated movie, sci-fi animated movie, Heavy Metal. Now, I had no idea what this series was about. I just saw a couple trailers randomly pop up on my uh, social media feed about this anthology of shorts, of animated shorts, and they looked really interesting. It was weird because I'm not used to, or it, or it has been a while, I should say, since we have gotten uh, animated shorts of this nature. I do remember the... Uh, the 80s heavy metal film of course I wasn't born when it came out but I have seen it and I do remember it uh, somewhat uh, strangely it's not technically my cup of tea but I do know that it is based of the long-running uh, magazine and uh, it just presents us different stories or vignettes in sci-fi settings and the story you know that that story element isn't necessarily my favorite because I, I you know, if you do, and that's one of the main issues I have, uh, excuse me, with uh, this love, death, and robots thing is that you are doing short stories, and on the off chance that you have a winner, that's it. All you're getting is like 10 to 12 minutes of story time, and then you're left with a massive cliffhanger, and it's never going to pick up again so you're frustrated and that happens a lot with this series love death and robots i mentioned earlier in the title card that it's sort of a, a, a reimagining if you will it was supposed to be this reboot for heavy metal but it, it didn't come to pass so it was rebooted instead as this uh, funky little anthology series now what you're getting is 18 standalone episodes all under 20 minutes long i think um the longest one being like 17 minutes or something like that and they all present different stories some are really short i i, I think there was one that was like five minutes long and others are more intricate in their presentation you have a totally mixed bag you have things like uh gladiatorial alien fights in underground futuristic uh, fighting rings you have uh, themes of love desperation there is a little bit of uh, black comedy of horror uh, all the fantasy elements that involve a series like this you know examining uh, life and what it's worth and the nature of our being on, on the universe and how we uh, relate to it all those topics get explored in this uh, miniseries that for the most part succeeds. I know there was some controversy. I know a lot of people criticized uh, most of the stories because, yeah, for one, um, you know, it's super violent. <laughs> a lot of them are really violent. Almost all of them have some sort of nudity, which was hilarious to me because whenever i see american adult animated things they usually um you know to break the stigma over western audiences they go with the tired formula of cursing a lot showing a lot of uh, genitalia and extreme violence you don't really need that just because it says it's an adult 
animated thing it you don't you don't need that now I'm not saying the whole thing is like that because there are a couple of shorts a couple of shorts that I really liked that break the mold and do something really special uh, one of my favorites being the one with the uh, prehistoric fish if you've seen it you know what I'm referring to that was actually one of my favorites but for the most part just I don't know I found it really repetitive and boring and kind of cliched to depend on those three things for them to be edgy and sort of present a different style of animation that people haven't seen before you know it's great that you can do a lot of CG work because it looks amazing but again we don't really need that in every single episode um, yeah it's fine here and there and I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a bad thing especially if it enhances the story and all that stuff but when you use that as a crutch it suffers and I think the audience uh, notices uh, voluntarily or involuntary I, I, I'm not too sure on that but they do notice and the other thing that was criticized was the treatment of uh, women in a couple of these shorts which was really uh, okay <laughs> it was out there um, I'm not going to turn this into like this uh, moralistic debate and stuff I'm just reviewing the series but overall most of the stories were really interesting and presented sort of this dynamic view of alternate futures with technology and the way people interact with it there were a couple of which surprised me I thought they were all gonna be CG but there were a couple that were <clears throat> uh, 2d drawings the one in China uh, was really amazing and uh, that was the other one with the uh, yogurt, which was totally ridiculous, but the social commentary was on point, and it was just so bizarre seeing it compared to the uh, Drift storyline, which had some really uncanny valley CGI stuff. Uh, it, it was it was a weird trip, man, just, you know, to say the least. And then you had sort of shorts that uh, did sort of like the photo real tech, where I guess the actor was filmed doing the scenes and then it was um, digitized to where like it created a blend between the two worlds uh, the real world and CGI stuff uh, I, I'm not too sure on the process on that it looked very intriguing and you, it just hooked you it made you want to keep looking at it uh, regardless of the story quality and and I'm a huge fan of animation I love the genre itself so I was really excited and I am really excited that this series exists and it can explore different animation methods the last one with the secret wars between the uh, uh, Russians and the evil demon monster things that was amazing it looks straight out of a movie or a high quality video game so overall yeah I do believe that it is worth your investment I think you'll find something to like with each one not everything hits the mark the way certain characters are written especially the treatment of women and just the violence and nudity and gore and all that stuff might some might pull some people out of it but I don't know uh, give it a shot if you are interested in animation it is a good exercise in what we can do in 2019 with the medium and I am hopeful because it did get a good rating a lot of people did like it uh, you know they are far out there but I do wish that we get a second season of uh, love death and robots with more shorts uh, so hopefully that's a thing you know it's a little bit adult oriented so it's not uh, for the kids but if you enjoy animation and interesting stories and just random concept random sci-fi ideas I think you're gonna uh, find some amusement in it so what do you guys think about uh, love death and robots let me know down below as always guys thank you for following me here uh, on a weekend geekdom on YouTube Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the, hit, hitting the notification bell. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next review.